Hi everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts Designs. We've got more Cernit. This is the Cernit translucent in the Bordeaux. I don't know what's making me think these will go together, but we're going to give it a try. This is the translucent Cernit in the Violet. And this is the metallic cernet in the pearlescent. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start with this pearlescent. Okay, I'm just going to cut off. A chunk I'm gonna try to keep these kind of the equivalent of a um, a bar of Primo okay I'm gonna roll this out and then I'm gonna put I have no idea what brand these are these were gifted to me by my friend Cindy um, I want to put this heliotrope purple um, on this pearlescent cernet. Kind of flatten it out a bit first. rolled some crud in there and I'm not worried about it. There we go. I don't know why I'm being so careful about this. I'm just going <laughs> to mix it in. But I do want enough in there. Oh. Alright, I'm just going to mix this together and get all purple and stuff. So, Okay, because that mica powder isn't really giving me the color um, that I'm wanting, this is one of the Ranger alcohol pearls and this one is the uh, have dumb names it is the villainous and they have a ball in them so you gotta you've gotta shake them first off they'll sound like they don't even have a ball just keep shaking
Sometimes people underestimate the power of a shake. <laughs> All right. It's a hard squeeze. I'm just gonna let that um, do its thing a minute, and then I'm gonna put my finger in it. Hmm. Hmm. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to let it um, evaporate. Then I'm going to turn it over and paint it with white acrylic paint. I'm going to roll out the same bar of the violet and the Bordeaux and paint the other side with acrylic paint. I'm going to get those rolled out and I'll I'll be back. This is the Bordeaux. If I can get it open. It's actually not bad. Now, the thicker you put the paint on, the um, the the more your lines, your white marbling lines, are gonna show. Okay, this one is the violet. Okay, now, it's completely dry. I'm just gonna cut it up. Doesn't matter whether your cuts are diagonal or just a plain grid. Okay, now I'm going to cut each color up, the Bordeaux, the Violet, and the Pearl that we added a little bit of purple to. I'm going to, okay, crumble it up, spread it out a bit. Okay, now I'm going to put this in a bag. I'm just going to use our same old, same old bag. I'm going to do this with the other colors as well. And then we'll mix it all together. Okay, then I'm going to put a little bit of liquid clay, uh, this liquid Sculpey. Or Bacon Bond, or... Okay. This is the way it dumped out. Okay. 
the point here is to try to compact so that when you make the cube it doesn't want to fall apart. The more you handle it, the uh, less gold leafing effect you'll have on the surface. But that is not really important. Okay, I just let it firm up just 10 minutes or so. But still, just because it's so fresh... If you were cutting this um, to preserve the pattern if you were doing a cane or something uh, I would suggest putting it in the freezer before you cut it see and then some of them cut right through Kind of ridiculous, I know, but you just want to use the whole slab, <laughs> the whole cube. Turn it into a slab. Right. It's just a piece of paper to keep the clay from sticking to my roller so bad. Still got clay on it. this through my post machine <laughs> on my thickest setting to start out with and then I'll roll it down to a three and then we will decide how we're going to cut it up I'll be back okay here's how here blah, blah, blah. here's how they came out of the oven and I rarely show the uh, before after baking just because they don't really look different enough I feel to show but these first of all I love how when you cut earrings out of a slab you're trying to make them symmetrical most of the time and I'm loving how I got the colors. Basically, this one has a little bit more of that Bordeaux. But, they're, they're great. I'm loving how that Cernit Purple came, Violet came out. 
All right, I'm going to set these up to put some UV resin on, and I'm going to come back and show you putting UV resin on one of them, and I'll be back. Okay, this is just my BS resin, which is just the one off of Amazon. It's got a pretty high rating, and I really like it. <laughs> And it was cheap. And it's really good for... Like... It's really good for doming. It's got a medium viscosity and... Okay, now this is just a silicone tool. Came in a set I bought years ago. Um, pretty sure it came off of Amazon. It may be in my Amazon shop, but I'd have to check. Okay, I just like to look, <laughs> look from the top, look over them. This one probably could use a tiny bit more, but. Really and truly, it's really similar to icing a cake. You gotta, you gotta get a little icing ahead of your swoop, and and get it to the edge, and then stop. That way, the icing looks pretty. It's the same principle. You're just going with the. Um, natural surface tension. Okay. Those look pretty good. Alright. We're going to put them under the UV lamp. I do it for four sets of 90 seconds. I know that sounds like a long cure. And you're saying mine cures faster, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I don't mean blah, blah, blah. But anyway, keep in mind, when you go to the nail salon and have your nails done, they're brushing on a coat. <laughs> Not pouring it straight from the bottle onto the piece. In other words, it's a lot thicker than what you're getting on your nails. That's why it takes longer. Okay. Alright. I'm going to cure these. Okay. Now you can really see how that UV resin helps bring those colors to life. Especially that silver leaf. Alright, so I'm going to UV resin the rest of these. And um, put them together as earrings and I'll be back. Now there are other products you can put on the earrings. You can put, um, actually you can put the Sculpey. 
and yes, it will turn clear and shiny. After you bake it in the oven, that just sets it. Then you'll go over it with your heat gun, and it will eventually, it does take a few minutes, turn clear and shiny. I may try to show you that in another video. And you can also put things like a Varathane sealer or something. Polymer clay is pretty particular about what you seal it with. Most, and I'm going to say most as in 99% of spray sealers are not compatible with polymer clay. A water-based clear gloss sealer is your best bet if you want this effect. Now, you can go with a matte or a satin if that's your choice. And you can always sand and polish. Now, if I was sanding and polishing, I would not go with a three. Not only on your piece, but on your fingers. <laughs> now, on some of these, I have done... Just like these purple ones. I have done some cabochons that I will um, sand and buff eventually. Alright. Okay, so I'm going to UV resin these and set them up and we'll be back. Oh my, <laughs> these turned out so pretty, these little leaves, these ovals with the hexagons, I'm sorry, I'm showing myself and not you, <laughs> these little leaves. These teardrops. Oh, I love that violet. I'm definitely going to have to uh, revisit the violet. As well as the Bordeaux, but separately. Alright. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. Seriously. Thank y'all for joining me and thank y'all for subscribing and staying subscribed that is a thing trust me I have over 20,000 subscribers and I still comment to every commenter nearly every commenter unless they say something rude That to me is important. I don't just leave a heart. I don't just leave a thumbs up. I comment. Even if it's just a thank you. Because I do thank y'all. A lot. That being said. <laughs> thank y'all so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Like everybody's video you watch. Including this one. Bye for now.